The HP Pavilion gaming laptop was a budget entry laptop released in 2019. But how does it hold up in 2021? Let's find out on the latest episode of Benchmarked. Hey guys, I'm Joe and welcome back to another video. Today we'll be adding to our new series called Benchmarked where we find budget computers either used or new and see how capable they are at playing modern games. Our last laptop featured was a refurbished Asus Swift 3 and it was a Ryzen 5 4500U with integrated Vega graphics. If you missed that one, you can check it out on my channel. Links will be in the description below. Today though, we are featuring a used HP Pavilion 15 gaming laptop with a dedicated NVIDIA GTX 1050. We will be doing a teardown and some cleanup and maintenance, followed by gaming benchmarks. As usual, you can find timestamps below if you want to go directly to a particular section. It has gaming in the name, so this should be a cakewalk, right? Before we get into that though, let me tell you about this laptop. I picked up this laptop used on eBay for $500. For port selections, on the left side, it has the power port, and a USB 2.0 Type-A port with HP Sleep Uncharged. On the right side, there is a HDMI 2.0 port, a USB 3.1 Gen 1 Type-A port, a RJ45 Gigabit LAN port, a USB 3.1 Gen 1 Type-C port, a combined audio jack, and a multi-format SD media card reader. On the inside, we have a 4-core AMD Ryzen 5 3550H with a max boost of 3.7GHz and integrated Radeon Vega 8 graphics, a single stick of 8GB DDR4 RAM at 2666MHz, a 256GB M.2 NVMe SSD, a NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1050 with 3GB of GDDR5 dedicated graphics a 15.6-inch 1080p matte IPS 60Hz display, 802.11ac Wi-Fi 5, Bluetooth 5.0, a backlit green LED full-size keyboard with numpad, and Windows 10 Home. To open this laptop, we just need to pull the 7 screws holding on the back cover, then use a plastic pry tool to loosen the clips holding it in place. It can be a little tight the first time, so I recommend it working your way from the back. We can now see a majority of the components that are important to us after removing the back panel. We bought this one used and it definitely was in need of a cleanup. The fans and heatsink vents were full of dust and the thermal paste was starting to dry out on the CPU side. The GPU side was still good, so that tells me that this probably did very little gaming or graphics intensive applications. We'll start the cleanup by removing the 6 screws holding down the fans and the 8 screws for the heatsink. We'll replace it with some fresh Arctic Silver thermal paste. When that's done, we'll do the opposite and reinstall the fan and heatsink. Looking at the components, we have a 256GB NVMe SSD. There is space for a regular 2.5 inch SATA drive, so any drive upgrades would easily be done by removing the dummy plate and installing a new 2.5 inch SATA drive. For the memory configuration, there is 8GB of 2666 MHz DDR4 RAM installed in one of the slots on the motherboard, with the other slot empty, waiting for a dual channel upgrade. Look out for that in our next video. It has a 51 watt hour lithium polymer battery that's rated for about four and a half hours of normal everyday use. We are now done with the teardown, so let's close it up and do some gaming. Let me preface this by saying that all games are run at 1920 by 1080. And first up, we have Tomb Raider. We have this running on medium settings and we're getting an average frame rate of 44. Dirt 4 hours are at high settings and we are getting an average of 63.
Watch your entrance on the Joker. This one won't count. I still haven't figured out how to get Afterburner running on Destiny 2, but I would say the average was 55 and it was on medium settings. Jedi Fallen Order was running on medium settings with a still 47 frames per second. We had FIFA 21 pretty much maxed out on high settings with anti-aliasing of 4x and it was running at 58 frames per second. Showing plenty of defensive acumen and conceding the throw in. Can he play it in? Sadio Mane in the middle. PUBG was on medium settings, but we had to set the shadows to the lowest setting in order to get a stable 87 frames per second. For Fortnite, we were using DirectX 11 for the render mode and it was set at medium settings and we got a solid 92 frames per second. Rogue Company was on medium settings with an average of 88 frames per second. Rocket League was set to high quality and we got an average 62 frames per second. For GTA 5, we ran the benchmark and on high settings, DirectX 11 with anti-aliasing on, we got 71 frames per second. Apex Legends was on high settings and we were getting a solid 54 frames per second. And lastly, we had Valorant running on medium settings at 90 frames per second. Uh -oh. 
The HP Pavilion Gaming with the NVIDIA GTX 1050 is a good purchase if you're in the market for a gaming laptop on a budget, especially if you can get one in good condition for around the $500 mark. Considering the inflated computer prices in 2021, it runs AAA games at and above 60 frames per second with low to medium settings and runs lesser demanding titles at 1080p well over 60 frames per second at medium to high settings. This laptop gave great performance for the price and it has many upgrade options if you require more storage or memory. The port selection is plentiful and it has a solid build quality. The only negative I have is the loud fan noise once you're gaming or doing anything graphics intensive. But this is easily fixed by using headphones. And with that, this has been another episode of Benchmarked. If you made it this far, thanks for watching. Leave a comment telling me what else you would like to see in these videos. I added some new games based on your comments, so keep them coming. Subscribe and hit the bell so you can be notified of my next video. I'm Joe at Play. See you in the next one.